Today we're going to look at the Desert Air War in North Africa, 1940 to 1943. I did start this project some five years ago, but the scenery available at the time was not acceptable, so I shelved it. The game changer was the recent release of the Africa Global Open Land Class by Orbex, which has transformed the North African landscape. From 1934, Libya was officially known as Italian Libya, and its status on June 1940 was that of an Italian colony with an Italian administration. Egypt, on the other hand, was an independent monarchy with a strong British civil and military influence. The British Royal Air Force already had significant assets in Egypt by June 1940, mainly to protect the Suez Canal and the Middle Eastern oil fields. In Libya, the Italians had developed a modest number of airfields and emergency landing grounds throughout the country, but the exact numbers are not known. What is known is that by the end of December 42, there were, in western Libya, seven airfields, 25 landing grounds, 52 emergency landing grounds, one seaplane station, one seaplane anchorage, and one emergency seaplane. Some of these were built or established by the Italians and Germans, while the remainder were constructed by the Allies, mainly the British and South Africans. The vast majority were simply patches of open desert with markers, no buildings and no facilities. Tents were used for accommodations, operations and supply shelters. These landing grounds were typically used for a few days or weeks and then the war moved on, leaving them vacated and abandoned. Nearly all of them flooded out during the fall and winter rains, which made them unserviceable for days at a time. In Egypt, the airfields were much more developed and were mainly centred in the Alexandria, Cairo, Port Said area. Those in the northern coastal area, west to Sidi Barani, were less developed and even primitive in some cases, not unlike their counterparts in Libya. By the end of December 42, there were 26 airfields in Egypt. 77 emergency landing grounds, two seaplane stations, and six seaplane anchorages. Axis airfield construction efforts were minimal, aside from laying out an airstrip of sorts, and this was largely due to the lack of building materials caused by the shortage of shipping space for lower priority war material. When fighting commenced in North Africa in June 1940, the Royal Air Force's Air Headquarters Egypt immediately mounted bombing missions against Italian targets in Libya and helped repel the Italian offensive into Egypt. The RAF was initially under strength and equipped with the obsolete Gladiator and Blenheim aircraft until modern aircraft began to arrive in Egypt. 
1941, as Greece came under attack from Germany, units were diverted to Greece and, in Libya, German air and ground forces pushed the weakened British back. This was the beginning of the Africa Corps offensive under Lieutenant General Erwin Rommel. During the desert campaigns of 41-42, the RAF provided essential battlefield support to the often beleaguered ground forces, attacking enemy armour and supply lines despite extremely difficult operating conditions. In October 41, to achieve closer air-to-ground cooperation, Air Marshal Sir Arthur Tedder, commanding RAF Middle East, oversaw the formation of the Western Desert Air Force. Its commander, Air Vice Marshal Arthur Conningham, developed a mobile, highly effective tactical air force, which in August 42 began to receive modern fighters capable of competing with the German Air Force for air superiority. By November, the Desert Air Force comprised 29 British, Australian and South African squadrons, which, augmented by other Allied units, were able to offer overwhelming air support to the 8th Army's offensive at El Alamein. With Operation Torch, the Allied invasion of French North Africa in December 42, more squadrons arrived to pressurise Axis forces, while in Tunisia the Desert Air Force helped the 8th Army to outflank enemy defences in southeastern Tunisia. Finally, before the Axis surrendered on 12 May 43, Allied fighters shot down scores of German transport aircraft attempting to evacuate their trapped forces from the dwindling Tunis bridgehead.
Looking at the Allied aircraft involved, the air defences of Britain always received priority, so the Desert Air Force was generally equipped with older aircraft types. Initially equipped with obsolete types like the Gloucester Gladiator biplane fighter and the Bristol Blenheim light bomber, the Desert Air Force made a good showing against the equally obsolete Italian Air Force. After the direct threat to Britain receded, newer types were assigned to the Desert Air Force, such as the Hawker Hurricane and Douglas Boston medium bomber in 1941. US-built P-40 Tomahawks also went to the Desert Air Force as they were unsuited to European operations which were generally fought at much higher altitudes and against more formidable opposition. The P-40 was used initially as an air superiority fighter but it was also adapted and found to be ideally suited to ground attack missions. The Desert Air Force always outnumbered its Axis opponents and concentrated on long-range interdiction and direct tactical 8th Army support. Unfortunately, these tactics meant that the faster Messerschmitt 109 of Jagdgeschwader 27 usually had the advantage of height and surprise over the low-level, slow-flying Desert Air Force fighters, and losses were correspondingly heavy. In 1942, the Desert Air Force reorganised its tactics and upgraded its inventory. Spitfires were eventually assigned in the air superiority role, becoming operational in August 42, which allowed the Desert Air Force to finally turn the tide. The Desert Air Force adapted the Luftwaffe concept of tactical air support and army cooperation by using fighter bombers controlled via radio by forward air controllers, these being trained Air Force observers attached to forward army units.
the Desert Air Force improved the concept by introducing cab ranks of fighter bombers in the air, waiting to be called in to attack specific tactical targets. In this way, the Desert Air Force provided vital and decisive air support to the 8th Army until the end of the war, fighting through Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Sicily and mainland Italy. The tactical concepts which had proven so successful in the latter part of the North African campaign were subsequently adopted with even greater success during the invasion of Europe in June 1944. So if you enjoyed that, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.